Hi, welcome. We are live at West Bloomfield High School. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. In honor of You Matter Week, we are interviewing a West Bloomfield High School security paraeducator who takes time to welcome everyone, make people feel welcome, and that they belong named Leroy. How are you doing today? Terrific, thank you. What is your schedule like when at work? Well, I come in and try to welcome everybody when they come in the door. Uh, that's my goal, and maybe let them know some of the things that are going on here at West Bloomfield, such as football games, swimming meets, plays, uh, soccer, uh, some of the uh, daco, uh, some of those things that are going on that I heard about, and that I got to try to pass it on to the kids. And uh, other than that, that's what uh, my first thing in the morning is. And then I walk around and make sure all the doors are locked uh, and then come back. And then I'm in the office here uh, making sure that everybody's got to pass the leave and that whoever comes in has to come and see me to make sure we get them where they want to go or they have to stay here until the principal or somebody else comes forward. When cool. did you start working at WBHS? I worked here last year and this year, and then I took a year off um, when my significant other died, and I um, went to Dubai and Egypt with my brothers, and uh, did a lot of things, worked at my daughter's bar in Florida, and uh, did quite a few other things, did a little small traveling, but that's what I did, and then they asked me to come back, and I said, yeah, I'd like to come back, I love the kids. So that's where I came back. That's cool. And um, so what inspired you to be a security guard? Well, I had a business. And when I started phasing out my business, I don't like standing around. So I needed to do something. So I went to a security interview and turned out it was the lady that interviewed me who was be my boss. Uh, I sold her house 30 years ago and she said you were the only one that told us like it was anyway. So I got the job of course and that was here at West Bloomfield when uh, the other principal was here. Uh, Watson. Watson. Yep. No. Watson. Pat Watson was here. He's a good guy and uh, I came here and they sent me down for a couple of days to see if they liked me and he said you're coming back, are you? And I said, yeah, I'll come back if you want me. Yeah, I'll come back. <laughs> so that started the West Bloomfield here. Yeah. yeah. What anxiety on your first day? No, I don't think I ever have any anxiety. I, I've been in sales for a long time, and that sort of helps take it away. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't feel um, butterflies or something like when I played football, or you'd have butterflies when you went out of the game for a little bit. At least I did. And uh, but overall, no, I don't have any anxieties. When you do have those butterflies, how do you deal with that? And that's a good question, and I would say I overcome those by not um, either thinking about positive things, which I think you should most of the time, because my feeling is, if you're unhappy, it's your problem, not nobody else's fault. Uh, so, if you're unhappy, it's your fault. Because you let yourself be unhappy. There, everybody's got challenges. It's not the challenge, it's how you handle the challenge. Mm -hmm. So, unless you're dead, you know, everybody's got challenges of some type. It might be smaller for you guys, might be bigger for me, or vice versa. And so as a result, you've got to be able to handle that challenge in the best way you can and then let it go because that's all you can do. Yeah. So yeah, what is the easiest thing about this position? I don't find it very hard at all, so I don't think there's anything that I can do, point to that was easiest. Yeah. Um, one of the things about working, as you guys will find out later in life, it's better you find something you like to do, and then it's not a job. It's just you coming in because you like the job, and you just happen to be making money with it too. So to me, 
Um, I like the kids here. Uh, I think you got a great principal. I like Pat Watson also before, who were both of my bosses. And uh, I think you got a good staff. I think the teachers do the best they can. Sometimes some of you guys will complain to me about that teacher and I'll say to them, that teacher sees more in you. That's why she's pressuring you to do better. And the ones that did do that, the ones that followed through on that, came back from college and all of them, every one of them uh, said to me, I said, how do you do it? How's the grades? I said, oh, they're great. I said, how come they're great? And he said, well, we studied all night. We studied this. I said, do you think it might have something to do with the teachers that got you prepared for college? And they give me a blank look and say, oh, yeah, Leroy, you're right. Huh? Maybe I ought to thank a teacher. Like the bumper sticker says, if you can read this sign, thank a teacher. And I remember you, like, because I did an interview with you one time last year for Laker Update, and I remember, it, like, for the Matter Week, I remember exactly, like, you, you said exactly that. So, yeah, that stuck with me. Yep. Yeah. What is your least favorite thing about this job? Least favorite thing? Yes. Well, that's another good question that I don't think of much. Um, least favorite thing? Well, I don't know if I can point to any one thing. Um, hmm. I don't think I have any that I can really think of right now that my least favorite because there again, it's your attitude. If you have the right attitude, you don't see those things. Sometimes I don't see some of the efficiencies. Sometimes I don't think, I don't see some of the kids that may be bad to somebody else, but they're, they're good to me. And I look them, they will learn. And hopefully that's what they're doing is learning here. Because as I tell them all, if you think it's bad here and the rules are tough here, what do you think it's going to be when you get outside? It's going to be a lot. You can't talk to your boss a certain way or he's going to tell you, get out. When I had an office, I had a sign over my desk. If you don't like it here, good. let that door, let that door hit you on the way out. So mm -hmm. that's the way I felt. You, you know, you come to work for a man or a woman or whoever and um, you're supposed to show up on time. And that's one of the other things that you guys will find out, some of the people that are not on time, constantly. So that's something else that you need to learn, and they will, eventually. And, uh, and they will, they will definitely learn. But as far as the school, I think that we have one of the best schools in the state of Michigan, as far as I'm concerned, because where can you go and have all these different ethnic groups, different religions, and walk, see them walk down the hall and having laughs with each other. It just makes my heart really good, feel good seeing that. Mm -hmm. Who do you like work with the most, like in this position? Well, in this position, most of the people I work with in the last, all the time I've been here has been Jess and mm -hmm. Tony. So mm -hmm. those are the two people that I really work with. Yeah. Other than that, I just see the teachers and, and give them compliments as far as I can do in a way. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's important that they know that they're doing the best they can also. Yeah. When you say like you matter to students, like what do you want them to carry on? It's a good thing. Yeah. Well, I think there's a combination of a, a few things with that. Uh, they open the door for somebody, I say you matter. I mean, that's, uh, and then they open the door and I'll say, what a nice act of kindness because mm -hmm. kindness is what we should want for everybody in the world let alone West Bloomfield here and I think uh, so to answer your question when I say you matter I'm hoping to brighten that kid's day because we as staff don't know what happened at home mm -hmm. and don't know what happened somewhere else um, I've had a lot of parents come up to me and thank you for saying that and uh, to my child. And, uh, but I think it's important to know that that child, no matter what their home life is, that they are important too. Mm -hmm. So that to me is what you're trying to do is build their confidence. Mm -hmm. 
What yeah. is your drive? What motivates you? Hmm. I guess over my lifetime, I've had an opportunity to help a lot of people, and I enjoy helping people, and especially children, because they have nowhere to go but up, is what you want to think. Like, oh, you guys are going to go to college, or you're going to go to still trade, whatever you decide, or maybe you'll start your own business and be successful in that. But so whatever you're going to decide to do or do, I want you successful. I want you to come back here and tell me how successful you are. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a great thing for me to hear. Yeah. What is your career history and roles? Well, I've had a lot of history. Uh, when you get to my age, you had a lot of a lot of stuff. Um, Played a lot of football. Mm -hmm. uh, wrestled a lot, and so sports. Um, being very honest, sports have saved saved my life when I was younger because I was sort of a street kid a while back, a long time ago. And so sports has enabled to help me use my aggression on the field or on a wrestling mat. And that was my way of getting rid of my aggression for me. Um, then I went on from there, went to college a little bit and here and there. and different places. Um, then I uh, was drafted into the Army. Oh my and gosh, really? Yeah, spent two years in the Army. I was a paratrooper, jumped out of planes, which that's not a real great thing to brag about. Because there's three weeks of jump school, and where I did it was at Fort Benning, Georgia. The first week they separate the men from the boys, and separate the second week they separate the men from the idiots, and the third week the idiots jump. So you don't want to brag about that too much, you know. Yeah. But uh, so, yes, I, uh, I so I spent two years there, went overseas a little bit, and uh, did some few things. Played football in the Army also. We were Army champs, the last place I was at in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. After I got out, started getting into sales. I loved sales. Um, I also was a bouncer for a while prior, before the Army. And, um, and so as a result, uh, in sales, I, I love people. Most of the time, I, I love people. Uh, I would say that that's the reason why I was successful, because I love people, and that's where, where, it's where I started my career in sales and worked for Ford for 11 and a half years before I went into sales full-time. Had my own business for a while phased out in 04 and then that's when I started looking for something else to do and a guy that took over my two offices after my last salesman left um, uh, he um, was a uh, bodyguard place and so I started doing bodyguard work for him and uh, that that turned out to be good because I enjoyed it and I didn't have to work when I didn't want to work and so that was good and um, then uh, came around to finally when I got to do this job with uh, uh, Pat Watson. And uh, then, uh, so that sort of brings you up to date where I'm at now. And okay. probably a few things in between, but that's all right. Oh, yeah. So were you born in Michigan or how did that, the um, Army, like, how did that come up to play? Well, I was born in Michigan. Mm -hmm. and raised in Michigan most of the time. I should tell you this also, I don't have a lot of hobbies, but my one hobby is traveling. Uh, so I've been over, over 30 countries, and um, including probably the furthest way was um, China and South Africa, um, but, uh, uh, and then I'm going this month to Thailand. Uh, so I'll be leaving on the 20th and be gone to the 1st of December. So uh, I love to travel. Uh, a lot of people like to hunt and fish and do all that stuff. But me, I like to travel, be with the people when I travel. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with people. Didn't know what I, I was saying. They, they didn't know what I was saying. They didn't know what I, they were. I didn't know what they were saying, but they were smiling. So that was good enough for me. 
Yeah. But I think it's just so interesting because, you know, I think, you know, like people make assumptions like, oh, like, but like, you know, you got to get down and deep, you know, with the interviewer and because I didn't even know that, you know, so I think that's, yeah, that's great. And um, thank you so, for your service. Yeah. Thank, well, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah. What motivates you in life? Hmm. Well, I believe in family. I also believe in God. Um, I feel everyone has the opportunity to believe whoever they want to believe in. Mm -hmm. Like I said about seeing different religions, different uh, country type of, type of people coming through here, it just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I've uh, had the opportunity to go to synagogues, mosques, and uh, be able to, and Indian uh, religions. And so I've had the opportunity to do that, and that's been good. Uh, my wife and I, when she was alive, uh, we, we were sponsors of what's called a YOU group in our church from 14 to 18. And that was fun because we'd take 21 kids down to Lee Summit, Missouri every year. And for me, it was a ball for my wife. I think she enjoyed it, although she would give the lesson and I was the one who would just be harassing them people and having fun so <laughs> um, but uh she was she was good at that but uh, yeah. uh so we had a lot of kids when we started the our youth group we had four kids and uh, before it was over we had 50 every week so wow um, so we my wife did a good job yeah i was just hanging out but my wife did a good job <laughs> what are some of the for your role in so i think that um, they tried to train me in some of the tactics to use and so on here. And then we have tests we take all the time. Um, and I say all the time, once or twice, uh, maybe updates every month, um, or every other month. And then, so, and then we have some tests we take at the beginning of the year and sort of keep us update what's going on. That's basically it or what to look for or what not to look for. So obviously my goal here is to make sure that whoever comes in is here for a good purpose, not a bad purpose. Oh yeah. Why do you go to all the sporting events? It's a good question. Thank you. I also go to the plays. Yeah. Friday night I was at the play, uh, Friday I was at the football game. I've been to every football game the last seven years. Wow. And then uh, away or wherever, and then I go to the place. Then I try to go to at least once to the swimming. Uh, I'll be at the basketball games. And the reason that is, because if you want to be a security guard, and you can be a security guard, but to me, to get, give you a reason another way. When they hired me this last time, this normally, when I first got hired here, for the first four years, it was Watkins. He hired me, that was the end of it. He was he wanted me here. Mm -hmm. So, but then when I hired the last, last year, before the year started, uh, I had to talk to a, uh, what's called a um, HO, or H, uh, uh, human resource person. Oh, HR, yeah. So, uh, HR, you're right. Yeah. And so, uh, she asked me a bunch of questions and blah, blah, blah. And finally she said to me, well, do you think you can get the respects of those students? I said, you don't get respect, you gotta earn respect. She looked at me kind of strange. I said, that's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. That's why I go to your events, you ask the question. That's why I go to these events. Because my feeling is, if I'm just standing at that door spitting out your matter and not go to your guys' events and go and support you wherever you're doing, then I'm not really doing what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to me, by going to those events is why I go is to support you guys in your activities. Mm -hmm. That's my reasoning. What yeah. does the You Matter movement mean to you? Well, number one, I didn't start this. Uh, kids for, uh, in the first four years I were here is the ones that started it. So the first four years, that's what I did as I go. It's because again, I have to show, I feel I have to show respect to you guys uh, to get respect. 
So mm -hmm. that's, that's my story. Do you believe you matter should be an everyday thing? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, oh, yeah. And can I say the reason for that? Oh, yes, again, absolutely. as I said, kids coming in, you don't know what their family life is like. What happened at home? Maybe they got a beating. Maybe their mother and dad was in a big fight. Um, and maybe it's just not a good home life. You guys are fortunate. And other people may not be as fortunate. Mm -hmm. And so when they walk through that door every morning, I don't know what happened to them. Sometimes they'll speak to me. Sometimes they won't speak to me. Sometimes you got the earphones in so they can't hear me. But uh, for the most part, that's why I feel you need to try to get that message off as much as you can. Sometimes probably people, your kids probably get tired of me saying it, but I feel it's important for them to get the message. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we necessarily do get tired of you. I feel like it's a reminder every day to start fresh. It yeah. makes us feel good too, and to just keep hearing it. If someone's, oftentimes as teenagers, we could be in that mood where one time we're good, one time we're not so good. It's that reminder yeah. to do well and to feel good. So, hey, who is good. your favorite teacher at the school? Oh, <laughs> that would be very hard. Um, one that retired was Keith. Um, oh, yeah. I yeah, I liked him a lot. He was, uh, he was a little like me. Keith was a very outspoken guy. I mean, he, he was nice to people, but at the same time, if you ask him something, he's going to tell you. So mm -hmm. it's the same with me. Don't be careful what you ask me because I'll probably tell you. So, um, so there's a couple of math teachers that I really like here. Um, but... I think we got overhaul. We got great teachers here. Yeah. An administration. Um, don't tell uh, Eric Pierce this, but I kind of like him. I mean, he's a good guy. He's sincere, and the stuff that's thrown at him every day from different angles, from the superintendent down, from the parents. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could handle that job as well as he's done it. In the same way with uh, Eric. Um, pace and then Eric Pierce gets a lot of stuff from him too and we all get stuff yeah so overall I'd say uh, most of the teachers here I feel are really good teachers and and if I don't know them uh, they probably are good teachers also mm -hmm. yeah and is there a difference between college and high school sure you get a lot more freedom Mm -hmm. And that freedom can be a troublesome for some people, especially if you don't, as I said earlier, about the rules here. Mm -hmm. So then these rules get you ready for outside, which is college or work, or whatever you decide to do, or a skill trade. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I would think that uh, it's more relaxing. You're Now you're an adult. You can go to class or don't go to class. Uh, or you can study as much as you want or go party. So you have all those choices now. Yeah. The freedom is open up. Now, are you structured enough to make sure you do what you got to do as far as the classwork? And then party? That's fine. And uh, But those are things that a college kid's going to learn to do now. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. And just hopefully you're ready for it, and you will be. And um, is it easier to make friends in college? Like from your perspective? I've always been able to make friends, but you got to be careful because sometimes the new person on the block, they're going to be the guys that you don't want to really be friends with are mm -hmm. going to cuddle up to you. And so as a result, you want to make sure that if they're new people that you find and sort of lay back and listen for a while to make sure that the kind of friends you want to have. Mm -hmm. or yeah. you want to surround you. So hopefully other schools will make you matter week a thing. We had so much fun. Thank you. Um, Thank Matt. you, Ryan, for also co-hosting oh, yes. alongside. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you're welcome. Is there one quote that we can leave this interview with? Yeah. As an example? Or just in general, like what's one pos po a few positive words of wisdom we can spread to others? I tell a lot of you kids in the school 
that whatever you decide you want to do, do it. Be careful who you tell that to, because some people will be very, very negative and say, you can't do that, or give you negative vibes. So you got to be careful who you tell that to. But if you really want to do something in your life, don't let anybody get tunnel vision and really go after it. And because if that's what you want to do, that's what you should do.